Welcome. This is Advanced Retro Adaptics, and I'm Tyler Disney. This episode is a conversation I recorded with my friends Megan and Toby. Now, I know Megan from the ERE forums, and we're in a mastermind group together. After I lost my job in 2021, she knew that I had some skills that could be useful on their school bus build, and she invited me up. So I wound up spending two months of that fall of 2021 in eastern Oregon, helping her and her husband Toby on their schoolie. Since then, they've sold their home and moved full-time into their bus with their five-year-old son Jasper. Over the recent holidays, they visited me here at Fort Dirtbag in California, so we turned the mic on and just had a conversation about bus life, money, part-time work, skills, middle-class lifestyles, side hustles, parenting, and more. I hope you enjoy it. Here is part two of my conversation with Megan and Toby. You mentioned side hustle projects. Could you tell me about some of your side hustle projects? Sure. Uh, we were used to really drinking really good coffee for years when we lived in Portland. And then when we moved to um, Eastern Oregon, there was nothing that we liked. There, there was a, a couple coffee roasters, but they were... They, they were, it was just diner coffee. Yeah. It wasn't anything special. So we somehow or another figured out that we could start roasting our own and then somehow figured out that the farmer's market didn't have a coffee vendor. And then all of a sudden we have, we're vendors at the local farmer's market and now we sell uh, our coffee wholesale and we have a little... On, on a, a glorified hobby sort of scale yeah um but a, a couple places and it but it it started it started off more or less from desperation because we wanted access to good coffee and didn't want to have to have it shipped there which is it you can do that there's a lot of coffee places that you can get subscriptions to and have it sent and it's very expensive and so we started roasting on a a uh, little air popper, popcorn popper, and we were surprised at how how good it was. And so that kind of grew into selling at the market, and then eventually we stepped up and bought a like a legit coffee roaster, small scale, you know, intro, small commercial roaster. But so we have that over at a friend's farm, and. It's it keeps our habit going and make a little bit on the side, and it's something that if we like we have no no goals of opening a cafe or anything like the I suppose that the potential is there, but it's not something we want to do. It's basically uh, keeping us in good coffee and we can uh, share it with others. Yeah. It's something we could scale up if if we sort of decided that was how we wanted to spend our time. Um, we haven't decided that yet. Yeah, and I, and I don't really see it see that happening because uh, it's it seems like there would be a lot of I, it would be more interesting to me to be able to supply a cafe with coffee um, as opposed to actually opening the cafe there's a lot of business responsibility that does not excite me yeah and then I have started uh, beekeeping and I got into beekeeping through uh, beeswax candles and I almost don't even remember how that happened but probably like COVID meaning I wanted to learn how to live without electricity and um, and I love the beeswax candles um, so last year I bought some wax and started doing hand dip tapers and sold at a little holiday bazaar and at a couple cafes or one cafe. And this year I, I like stepped it up a little bit and then, um, sold quite a few and now still have them for sale. And they're good. Like we keep trying to choose side hustles of things that have high stability like shelf life rather oh, yeah. so wax is great and then beeswax candles like they just you know they 
they're not uh, lettuce. They'll last a long time. Mm -hmm. And then we burn them. So I, so I guess that's, so the beekeeping, it's not yet, it's, it's probably not worthy of being called a side hustle yet. Right. It's, it's a hobby and that I've, um, like next year I'll spend much less money on it and hopefully uh, sell some honey and then harvest my own wax and uh, that will be a beautiful, you know, full circle making, I'll just have to figure out how to make the wicks. <laughs> uh, but like beekeeping is kind of interesting because the way a commercial beekeeper makes money is they have to truck their bees all over the country and I have zero interest in that. And what I try, I'm interested instead in doing is seeing if there's local farms or um, like fruit growers that want to have a couple hives that will share the cost with me of the bees or any equipment I would need to get and then support their pollination efforts um, and then share the harvest of honey if there was some. So they're, they're really, the side hustles are born out of our own interests. They're not calculated as far as like, we're definitely gonna make money. Um, but we are making money and not a ton. But again, it's the, the candles are a thing that I could see them definitely scaling up and that could be a decent part-time gig. Mm -hmm. if I wanted to do that. But it, it's just also more interesting. And like it, it's so interesting over the years, we have asked friends for advice, but most everybody we know it is just in a W-2 standard job. They mm -hmm. have no entrepreneurial experience. And maybe we just need a new set of people, but like we now are more, our, our experience is wider. Like we understand like limited. I'm, we're not good business people, <laughs> but we, we just, we- It's a compliment to a lot of people. <laughs> people not a good business person. Yeah, <laughs> but it's like, you know, when you work for somebody else, they assume all the responsibility. Yeah. And when you work for yourself, the responsibility is yours. And that is an exciting position sometimes. Yeah, like with the with the coffee thing, early on we, uh, a friend of mine does, has done some website building, things like that. And so we got a website for the coffee with the idea of, you know, promoting it online and, uh, in it, not in any sort of large scale thing, but so that friends and family or someone anyone interested can go and order it online and we can send it out and so we had a friend of ours built the website and neither meg nor myself are tech savvy enough to really be able to follow through with the website and so we we never figured out how to use it despite being shown by our friend that that built the website but we never we we didn't our our skill set was not in the technology nor and so, our interest or or our interest yeah. it, it was something that we didn't really feel strongly enough about and it wasn't a great loss but it was you know it it seems like it would be and at the time a lot of work to figure out this new system for minimal gain which is really what it would have been for and so i mean somewhere out there we have a website that uh is dead but available <laughs> and maybe someday we'll try to wake it back up but uh, we also don't know like what sort of future the coffee uh how that's going to play into any sort of side business or hobby with the just the very nature of of coffee availability and affordability is so unknown with the uh, with climate change and whatnot sure yeah but i get i get the sense that 
the more, I mean, I've been going through this myself because I was, you know, single specialty career for a long time, W2 only, never had any entrepreneurial experience whatsoever besides this one time I sold lemonade as a little kid, you know? <laughs> uh, and so it's been like the mindset shift between I work for someone I have a W-2 and like, oh, I can kind of piece stuff together. I can learn a thing and then someone will want to buy it or I have skills that someone will pay me for to come over and do and like a wide diversity. That was like a really big mindset shift for me and it makes me feel more secure in the world. Like you know, I, I used to basically think that like, oh, I needed an engineering job, which just means full time, full time and a half kind of obligation, salary, blah, blah, blah. Or I'll be homeless. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was just like kind of how my mind worked. Not not super consciously, but that was just kind of an assumption I had. And I thought it was going to be really difficult. I I guess I equated like doing side hustles and gigs with like, you know, a startup or something like that. Mm -hmm. But that's totally not how it was. Did you have much experience before? You know, last few years with these side hustles. Was there a mindset shift for you? Or did you already have? kind of a background in that sort of thing so it just wasn't that big of a deal no i i don't think we had a background in that and and i would say we still um we still have the big security of my job so like these side hustles they don't have to make us money right. we want them to break even of course but um i think there is a difference how we're doing it you know we're like testing the waters whereas someone who you know lost their job through covid and then is now selling pasta like they that has to work so there's an urgency that we don't feel which is why we don't do like i don't post pictures of my candles on social media be, or try and you know revive that coffee website which i appreciate so we're we have that the learning curve is, I don't know, it's the S curve. We're yeah. still in like the low portion of it. Um, and in one of the the goals of of these is really skill building and trying to kind of defer diversify into eventually be at a place where we don't have to rely on on a W two job. Um, you know, we can, we're spread out, you know, our, our needs are modest enough where we can, uh, rely on several small sources of income, uh, through doing things that we enjoy and that we get value out of instead of just going and doing someone else's work. Uh, so it's like, I want to eventually I'll not have big projects and I can, you know, maybe focus on some other things, le leather craft or uh, knife making, so something like that, something where I can, I'm, I'm gaining skills and one of the skills hopefully will be marketing it somehow on a, on a very modest scale. Yeah. You know, maybe that's, uh, you know, expanding our booth at the farmer's market and having, doing some craft stuff or maybe following through with some sort of online platform where, you know, we can, we can have, generate some income doing things that we want to do. And so some of that is just skill building and kind of diversifying our, our, uh, our skills. I, I see in your lifestyles that dynamic where you learn some skills to reduce your cost of living so that you can work less, so that you can spend more time on your skills and stuff, and some of those become possible income generators if you want. You can scale them up, you can scale them down, and then the need to have that more formal job even decreases more, and then like at some point you're just only doing things you really want to do and you have enough money. Yeah. <laughs> and it's just like a solved problem. 
It's so it's, interesting because that's what I see with you, what you're doing. And I hadn't really, I feel like we're doing a much more meandering approach towards that. You're like, you're way more disciplined, way more focused. And, but yeah, I mean, when you kind of scale out the big picture, I, I, it's can, a, I can, I can agree with that statement. Yeah. 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 It's a, it's sort of a positive feedback loop instead of the negative feedback loop of, working 40 plus hours a week to pay for the your car payment and your house payment and all these things that you don't necessarily want like it, you know you want you want your toys but you can only get them through credit and because you're not really making enough to be able to afford everything and i look at that as a negative feedback loop where you're doing all these these things that you really don't want to be doing but because that's sort of your role in society and and as a consumer and when you can hopefully you know hopefully what we're doing is learning how to not be on that treadmill and to have that like you're saying Tyler with it be more of the positive feedback loop where what you're doing is allowing you to work less so that you can do the things that you want to do which then reinforce working less and yeah doing the things that you want to do and raising our kid the way that he gets a more fulfilling life than just you know the next xbox iteration well, i mean when when i was living with you guys last end of last <laughs> summer uh you know i'd hang out with jasper and like that kid's knowledge of his food and where his food comes from, <laughs> like the ground and stuff, and also just his ecological literacy far exceeds my own. <laughs> <laughs> he's, he's five. <laughs> it's great. It's great. I mean, you have some work to do. That's what I hear. <laughs> <laughs> I do have some work to do. I have a lot of work to do. Yeah, but it's all it's all fun stuff, and it's yeah, it's like I've we've been talking about like some of the stuff that I'm doing right now for money i'm like ah, i gotta stop this this is getting in the way of uh sitting in one spot and listening to birds <laughs> you know <laughs> i need to spend more time looking at bugs like we went on a walk today and it was amazing because we've got the three of us and a six uh, five-year-old and so we're just stopping every 10 feet looking at stuff we found like some coyote fur maybe a kill site we found maybe like all these dead beetles over by a, maybe a spider hole lots uh, of scat lots of scat oh man <laughs> The scout was just never ending. It was amazing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and birds, yeah. Yeah, I feel like there's just a whole world out there of cool, interesting things to do uh, once you lift your head up out of a job and or like the latest Netflix video thing. How, how do they talk about it? No, just kidding. Um, <laughs> in... The one of the things that is difficult though is finding other people who are living such um, such an interesting life. I, I I don't mean to sound like I'm bragging about us, but like I know that like I don't think it's interesting to talk about a TV show. I think it's interesting to talk about the drawing that you attempted or the hike that you were on, and. I don't think I'm abnormal in those interests, but it's almost like one of the problems with living this lifestyle, which I can see you were nodding, is finding other people that you could do cool stuff with or um, don't think you're crazy or abnormal. It's like, what's not interesting about stopping and pulling apart some poop with a five-year-old, <laughs> you know? <laughs> Trying to figure out what this rock is or how this tuft of hair got here. Yeah. But you do have to be willing to uh, just step out of the norm, which is why it's extra awesome to be around you and your parents because it's that whole normalization effect where, ah, oh, it's just relaxing. Like, oh, I don't have to be kind of concerned about other people dealing with, um, like, I don't know, maybe you've experienced this, but like, if I say, there's many times over the years where I've been like, I've said something like a little bit difficult, like, 
ooh, I could never do that. That's, I, I was just going to say that, that we haven't heard that this whole time that we've been here through Ugh. the conversations about building the bus and things with your parents, obviously with you also. But we, we haven't heard, oh, I, I can't do that because of this, you know, I, I need my space for that. And yeah. there's a, in understanding or in, in, in acceptance to appreciate someone else's understanding mm. for their, their lifestyle that, you know, you're, that's not how your parents are, are pursuing their life, but they're, they can appreciate why, why we're doing it. And part of that is, you know, they have this weirdo son that is doing even that to the nth degree, you know? Yeah. And so they're in part of why you're doing it is like you said, because of, you know, they, they raised this kid to, to think outside the box and to look at things differently and to pursue things perhaps differently. And even if they don't get it, they, they can appreciate it. Speaking of when things are tough, so we started recording today in the afternoon with the rear deck of Serenity down, and we turned the fridge off because it's a cloudy day and my batteries weren't up, and so we had the mic plugged into the inverter, but then the inverter flipped off, <laughs> and then it started raining, so we maybe went over to the other trailer, but that didn't work, so we came back over, and the batteries just guys are getting new batteries, so... It's tough, y'all. <laughs> the, the struggle is real. The struggle is real. But it's also amazing because, you know, I mean, I just think back to the stress and the, the sort of quality of life that I had. And I was just charging and what I have to show for it now. Yeah. And it's like, yeah, no, this is great. Absolutely worth yeah. it. <laughs> no yeah. question. This juggling act of batteries and location, totally worth it. Yeah. Well, and like at, at the bus, we're we're plugged in right now. We don't have uh, solar. We we have shore power, but we don't have uh, lights wired in. So our lights are combination of string lights and headlamps and some work lights, things that need to be charged and therefore run out of charge in the you know in the evening when you're using them and so you you have to go through that shuffle of oh where's the other light or i need to plug it in and um and then candlelight and we a lot of times you know dinner time we have the candlelight or when we're laying in bed reading and it's we we were doing that at the old house because you were you were making candles at that point and especially during the winter you know when it gets dark early it's wonderful to have uh just candlelight yeah um it's really nice and now we know like you need to have at least two tapers to eat by <laughs> yeah. you gotta be able to see your food or... yes you got the skill yeah <laughs> sigmoid skill curve of, right uh, <laughs> candlelight living <laughs> somewhat yeah and and it just the the beauty the warmth of it it adds a richness like that i'm like i'm always like oh we have to turn the lights on you know and i i, I kind of think i could live without electric light i don't want to totally give up electricity but i'm I could live without electric lights, I think. Yeah. We'd have to, we'd have to do some setup, but... And uh, kind of up our candelabra game and... Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, I think that would be a beautiful way to live. Yeah. And I, you too? You, you, you've really inspired me because you're the first person that I know who's like been trying to do this sort of thing uh, or interested in it. And at first I was like, yeah, whatever, I'm off grid, it's fine. But yeah, like... The other day, I, and this is totally a humble brag, I was reading by one of your candles, Candle Light, <laughs> a book that I had found on the side of the road <laughs> that I would picked up on my ride back from town visiting friends, and that's like a 28-mile ride on a bike that I traded a different bike from another mutual friend of ours. Yeah. yeah. That's that like, awesome. it's like, that's a beautiful story because you didn't just buy it. Yeah. Like... 
I feel that's like we met on a blind date. Like I've always loved Toby, but I've always also really loved that we have cool or origination story. Yeah. And I there's just a richness. I mean, storytelling I goes back to ancient time and just being able to have a good story is mm. is is cool. Like humble brag, but that's a cool story. Yeah. Like the whole you know, it, it's not by accident either that you ended up under candlelight having biked, you know, for mm. 6 hours and you know, you have to be willing to do that. Yeah. But there are some true rewards yeah. to that. I totally agree. And I think that like you've been using the word interesting like about your life, like your life is interesting and it, it is interesting. And I think also it's like you are interested in it. Like mm -hmm. your life doesn't bore you. you yeah. Know? Like you're, you're the most uh, important audience of your own life. Right. And it's like, what do you do? Do you work 40 hours a week and watch Netflix? Yeah, it's pretty boring it's not that dynamic it's not that rich there's not much story to it it's a very common story and it's pretty simplistic but now you've got this really rich life you know all these people you're on this farm with this bus and these people and the wood came from this place and this tool was that and all these things and you're just like interconnected yeah, and it's just like interesting. You can just think about your life and be like, oh, yeah, that's an interesting story. Yeah. And like the bees and the candle wax and just like having a son, a young son, too. Like, I want to be more capable of explaining the world to him. Mm -hmm. And some of that is I need to interact with the world more than I was previously. So but also it just gets to be fun and to learn like why did my candles turn out this way? Oh, the temperature really of the wax really matters. And, or why did, um, my bees not perform very well? Oh, they had a fungal issue, you know, just like all of a sudden now your world is wider mm -hmm. and more varied. And, and then I'll, yeah, there's just so much more to think about and do. And and it is interesting to have you explain it that way. Like, I am more interested in this life that we are living, that I'm living, than I was, you know, seven years ago. And, and in full disclosure, like, we still have Netflix. It's where <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's been brought up a couple of times. And so uh, my uh, part of me is like, we still... Yes. still do watch the things we're still plugged in but there's a lot more interesting things that 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 we're doing um to make our lives more interesting and it not not with that as the goal but the things that we are doing make are making our lives more interesting yeah I, that's a i think that's an incredible point like I think there's a lot of people and I've fallen into this trap where I'm like, Oh, uh, I have these criticisms of the way normal society works or whatever. And there's a part of me that wanted to go completely ascetic, right? Like reject it all, renunciate it all. Uh, if I ever watch Netflix, it's bad. Like there's this, there's this weird Puritan part of my personality that like has an instinct towards that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. But is that the most interesting? Thing? Is that a really interesting story? Like, no, I still like, you know, like, uh, I just watched the whole Ring of Power series with my parents, mm. and that was cool. And like, I just went down, and hung out with my buddy. We played Dota two for three hours and drank hard eggnog. You know, it's like I have a richer, broader level of experiences, but I haven't like rejected everything. And I, I'm not this. I have grown out of the phase of my life where I was very like. Um, Puritan about mm -hmm. things that are like this is bad or whatever it's like well no I just like want a more interesting life yeah. or what I've got going on is not I'm just more relaxed about it I guess yeah, yeah. which is which is funny hearing you say more more relaxed about about it because you're it, it seems like the trajectory is you know you're going to be spending months on a trail walking and uh, doing that and and so there there's still this i guess i don't know if it's really a drive i mean i i don't know the the gears that are turning inside of you but 
uh, there's kind of a drive to not not reject the the trappings of modern Western civilization, but more of a, a hunger to explore the things that are outside of that, out, outside of the the regular middle class trappings. Yeah. Yeah, I would say that's accurate. Yeah. <laughs> we want to come with you. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, one one of the sort of Meg brought up the uh, interesting stories about our our coffee business is called Blind Date Coffee. You know, we met on a blind date, and she came up with the name for it being Blind Date Coffee. And one of the I hope I get the story right. There's we have we sell coffee at this one cafe, not not the coffee they serve, but the just the bag coffee. And they have, there are some customers that received a bag from their mom, something like that. They, they went on a blind date and had our blind date coffee added or something like that. And they met on a blind date and they ultimately got married and, you know, had this wonderful story that you know, had some similar things to how, how we met as far as, you know, met on a blind date and yeah. fell in love and whatnot. And so that's, it's a, it's a really interesting sort of, uh, continuation of what brought us together. And it was, it was really cool to hear the, like when possible, they only drink our coffee, you know, that's a, what better feedback can you get for for mm. something that you've created? Mm. Uh, I'm having in my mind. I'm thinking from this conversation uh, when I was in Scotland, when I was at uh, Ruba Foil uh, community in Scotland for two months. Um, uh, Bonner explained this idea of like the web of life. All right, but like when you know something about some other being, uh, you observe them, you know a fact about them, uh, there's like a thread that connects you mm. to that. And then if you know more about them, that thread gets bigger. And it's, it's this the idea of like a web of relationships, right? And if you know a very little bit, it's like this very tenuous threads, so, you know, you might not know very much about it. You can think of it as also like, uh, but just the more different types of things you do, the more thicker threads and connections mm. you have to all sorts of different things that become this really rich, like web of experience and relationships and, uh, things. And so like, yeah, you, you've got this connection because of how you met and that there's a connection to your side hustle coffee business. And now these people have a connection to that. And like, it's not just coffee to them. It means something to yeah. them in the same way that your side hustle means something to you. It's tied to that yeah. Yeah. story. That's just so cool. Yeah. 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 I could see that. And that's what I, I hope for in a community is like, we can't like entirely unhook from industrial civilization, but like I will buy my friend salad mix because I know her story. I know she does all these wonderful land practices that I support. And I will spend a little bit extra money to do that because I, I believe in what she's doing and I want to support her. But I also want to support her by not necessarily buying her food, but like volunteering with her and helping her. And like there, there's a there's got to be more connections out there that can be made to help each other need less money and be happier. I mean, that sounds so idealistic, but like here we are like a year and a half ago, who would have imagined we'd be hanging out in your tiny house yeah. by candlelight, having a really wonderful experience. Um, and and frankly being inspired by you like we're like i i'm inspired by your mom like grinding her grain and i'm inspired like oh to i i just really appreciate that um we get to hang out with you and and your folks and 
go away like energized really mm-hmm. yeah um yeah well it's likewise when you leave i'm 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 already feeling energized yeah i know <laughs> so cool. like okay bring on the rye pancakes <laughs> <laughs> yeah. i don't know where we're gonna put the grinder in the school bus but it'll get inside the bus now and... do we still have that one mm-hmm. okay mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah well and it's like I mean, <laughs> me as an introvert, like I can just cruise along doing my own thing for so long uh, that it's really, really good for me to have people come visit. I'm like, oh wait, what are we gonna all eat? Can we all fit in here? I only own two plates, <laughs> and then just like think through stuff, and it's it it takes effort for me because it's not my default way to think about things, but um, it like makes my life so much better to be able to think through those things and then like have an experience with people and like right 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 people are great <laughs> <laughs> um yeah but like you know you're talking about um like kind of the vision is to have a richer life and spend less money and it's actually happier right and like that's that's like the elephant in the room is that all these sacrifices us alternative weirdo people are making are, we're like our lives are better <laughs> they suck less like my version my life now sucks less than the version I had previously, right? Because mm-hmm. of these quote unquote sacrifices I'm making. Absolutely. Yeah. And 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 I think that there's a lot of things happening and you know, if if the the general worldview that we have of the trajectory of how things are going, it's like the 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 promises and the social contracts of the way the system works in terms of giving people, you know, nice things or whatever, is that as it begins to work less and less good, um, what we're doing is going to start seem seeming less and less crazy. Yeah. You know? Right. And it's like, it, it can be difficult now because it's so easy to just, uh, you know, all the entertainment options are there. It, for most people, it is generally easy to get a job with quote unquote, lots of money. I say lots of money because like to us, we've, we've learned how to like, live lives that are an improvement and we live on less than the poverty level you know but but we're not in poverty that's like a totally different ball game i'm not like equating us to people living in poverty because that's like a totally separate issue it's just that um what i'm trying to get at is that it's going to be clearer there's going to be more and more people saying like oh there's another way of doing things and so it feels like there's we might be at like the base of a hockey stick or something like that mm. yeah like, I feel like people might have been saying that since the 60s but yeah <laughs> yeah well i, I think know. we're not at, like for me personally covid was like whoa empty shelves that's mm. crazy oh um and like and i and it's almost so far away now that it's hard to remember but yeah my i started fermenting i was like one of those people who picked up fermenting but now i love it and this but yeah as a as a person who does think uh society is not going to be support like i don't really feel like i should be saving money for my kid to go to college Mm -hmm. um i could be totally wrong about that but i feel like he we are going to serve him better in the world if he has some he knows how to cook if he knows how to grow food or where it comes from or if he feels comfortable in many different situations like i this is i don't think i've ever told you this but i would like my son to feel comfortable in like a trailer park i'll just Mm. you know be like super classes i want to be comfortable at all levels like Mm. let's go to the ritz carlton and have tea sometime i want you to be comfortable in that setting because i feel like that's a skill yeah, that'll that would be an interesting adventure. Yeah, the the three of us at the Ritz. Yeah, I think it would be kind of fun. I don't know if we'll ever do it, of course, but <laughs> I'll be at the table over to watch. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> but like, I do feel that um, uh, the way I believe to raise our son to survive in the world is different than the way I was raised, and um, and and we have we have a limited amount of influence i mean we it's it's limited um in that you know to to some extent he's going to he's he's going to develop his likes 
and dislikes and his own comforts and we can we can only provide so much yeah and you know i think it's a trap that most parents fall into that you know they'll raise their kid to be a certain way and then their kid will be a certain way and you know so sometimes that's the case but a lot of times kids they they're they're going to be themselves and sometimes that's going to align with uh, the parents goals and sometimes not sometimes that's going to push them into the the opposite realm yeah. and we but could... it's like uh, it's all we can do is is expose them to the to being like you're saying comfortable in different lifestyle arrangements and different mm -hmm. surroundings and yeah. and not to look at uh, others as being better off because they have these things and you know and then hopefully he'll pick up what we're putting down yeah yeah we don't know yeah i do think i'd like him to know the phases of the moon i'd like him to know different types of owls and at a certain point he'll have to decide does he want to continue learning those types mm -hmm. of things or does he want to go like you guys really screwed me over <laughs> and i'm like i have to go get all these student loans and it's it's uh it's a crapshoot yeah but like i still like i do feel strongly that he, we will be providing him a better life if he knows how to you know build his own home or have some skills of his own that he doesn't he doesn't even know he's learning he's mm -hmm. just participating you know like he is a beekeeper with me mm -hmm. he knows how to work a smoker he knows how to find i don't know if he can find the queen bee that's difficult but he knows how to lift up a frame and check it and he knows what honeycomb tastes like right from the hive you know and he and knows how to take a stinger out of his hand. Um, like he knows things that he will maybe never need to know again, but he could use those. Mm -hmm. and, and I think some of this is like raising him is, is like a rejection of how I was raised. I don't know about for you, Toby, but like I was kind of useless. Like I, nobody really said or I never heard it if they did like you should know like some skills it's like here I am 46 learning skills like god why if I had had these skills 20 plus years ago I mean life I would just have been so much further down that skill path <laughs> or or <laughs> would you have rejected it at the time because you you know you shouldn't be you you shouldn't have to know those things because you're a city girl yeah and like I you know the when we got the wood burner for at our old house um that was the first time we both of us really had a developed a great appreciation for heating our house it wasn't it's not just going over to the thermostat and turning it up yeah. and ja that's something that jasper is is familiar with and i mean right now that's our heat is turning up the the space heater or the diesel heater in the bus but when we get the wood stove in we're going back to that to a, a greater degree and he when we go and get firewood that's a, a family event the three of us go out and you know we have the chainsaw and we have some hand crosscut saws uh, that we're we're learning how to use and learning that that's a lot of freaking work <laughs> yeah. Yeah. and and it, it really it's it's fun it's a it's a great feeling to go out into the woods and get firewood and bring home and chop it and stack it and bring it inside the house and heat your house with it it's it's so much richer than just turning up the thermostat and paying the gas bill yeah and in and until you've done that it's you don't really 
have that appreciation for it. And I love that that Jasper is a part of that. I mean, he's kind of young to be chopping the wood, but he's out there with his picaroon, you know, moving wood around and uh, he has his machete that he's whacking wood with and not really being helpful, but he'll throw some of the wood around and, you know, but he's, he, we're raising him with that familiarity that we didn't have yeah. with that. And that's, that feels good. Yeah. And that feels like we're, we're doing something right. And then he'll have the option to pursue it or not, yeah. but knowing yeah. a little bit more and we'll see. Well, I, 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 regardless of the specific skills he learns, like he, he has already learned and he's just going to continue to learn the idea, learn the mindset that he's capable of things. He's capable of learning things. There's a broad variety of things that he can do and be competent at, you know? Whereas, like, not everyone learns that. Mm -hmm. They learn that, like, oh, I'm going to learn a thing. I have to get a credential. I have to sign up for this official formal thing and then blah, blah, blah. And, and yeah, I like, water comes from the tap. Electricity comes from the switch. Tomatoes come from the store. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Like, yeah. like, he's... He's not even going to know that that's a thing. <laughs> no, he yelled at me the other day, like, turn off the water. <laughs> and I thought, yes. Yeah. <laughs> the, the, the image I will always have in my head of your son is I was working on the bus and I look over and there, there's a pile of uh, firewood in your, in your yard there. And Jasper is standing on top of it. He's wearing pajama pants. He's not wearing a shirt. He's not wearing shoes. And in his right hand, he has a axe. Maybe <laughs> 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 you want me to edit that out? That's yeah. fine. But I just said, but like, he was cool. I've yeah. seen him, and, you know, and I've, I've seen him, like, you know, handle a lot of sharp tools. Yeah. And he has yeah. all his fingers and toes still. Yeah, and he, um, yeah fingers crossed and also yeah. you can do a lot with few like if you use a finger it's not always a big Tom yeah Tom McCall, the greatest climber in the world he chops his own middle finger yeah right off. yeah <laughs> you know but, you just hope it's not a thumb you know yeah. the thumbs are pretty important, thumbs are important. yeah but is. but like the exposure to danger um and the idea that childhood is about being safe is a, such a dominant part of a of a being a western parent mm -hmm. i don't know if it's a class thing i don't know but like oh my gosh i feel like i have to explain like oh we're okay if jasper does get injured he'll learn a lot yeah. like and he um enjoys and he still actually has a pretty healthy sense of danger mm -hmm. like that big rock today he didn't want to climb it until all of us got up on yeah. it yeah, and he's, then he was up for it. So he, he's, he's not, not a danger. He's not kid. totally wild and and just gung ho about doing things. He he has a natural sense of self preservation. Yeah, but I don't I don't feel I feel pretty strongly about this, but I don't feel like one of my jobs as a parent is to make sure he never gets injured. Yeah. I think that's actually a detriment to his learning how to use his body learning about himself in space like i i would suspect also that if you grow up <clears throat> and you're always sheltered from harm you don't you don't learn a sense that you can be harmed yeah right? and so like yeah like you're saying like being being injured sometimes it's like oh the, the world can be a dangerous place because it is there's no getting around that and I've got to pay attention. I just read my neighbor, uh, who's a Grand Canyon River guide, lent me a book on. It's called Death in the Grand Canyon. It's about all the different ways people die in the Grand Canyon. <laughs> it's a fascinating book. You know, falls are the obvious one. There's plane crashes, drowning in the river, uh, dehydration, heat stroke, all these different ways people die. And I, I don't know if this is completely accurate. I'll, I'll fact check myself. But in that book, somewhere at the end, I believe it says that. Of all the people who fall, ac accidentally fall and die, none of them are children. Yeah. Mm. Some, like, older teenagers and adults. Like, mm. that's it. And it's like, yeah, kids just have a natural preservation. Like, they might, like, run close to an adult. Oh, 
they haven't fallen in yet. Yeah. Yeah, and Like, in the whole history of the Grand Canyon, you know? So it's like, <laughs> yeah, the kids are fine, don't worry about it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right. It's, it's maybe the adults who were sheltered from yeah, the yeah. whole time who didn't have a sense and, like, got close to the edge and or were fooling around or whatever. Yeah. Yeah, or who have lost all connection with their body because yeah. they just sit all day. I mean, I don't think we also totally know what we're doing as parents <laughs> and it's, but but our default is to um it's like i do trust my instincts now i do if i have an instinctive reaction like stop i trust that mm. and like we were really turned away from co-sleeping oh you're gonna smother your kid well we're not drinkers we don't smoke or do drugs but and so the pediatrician gave me such a hard time yeah. about it when I said that was our plan. Well, one night, Jasper's in bed. I am 100% asleep. Toby rolls over. Jasper's in between us. He starts to roll over on Jasper. I wake up from a dead sleep, and I shoot my arm over Jasper. <laughs> and after that, I was like, F you, pediatrician. We're good. <laughs> and so, like, but... But you, as a parent, I've had to develop that. And I think it's fair to say, like, we have a kid who is not danger prone or isn't as wild as they come. So, like, yeah. And yeah. That, and that, that's not to say that his legs are not bruised up from falling and, and scrambling and doing all, like, you, you look at him and it's clear he's out there in the world experiencing it. Yeah. And, but he, like, if we're sledding, like, he doesn't like going super fast. He doesn't, you know, he he has he has that whatever is inside of him that says, that's too much for me. But he's still, he, he's experiencing life, you know, daily and, and being rough with it. You know, being, being rough in the world and finding out that, you know things things hurt yeah <laughs> you know right. uh, those it took today on the walk he had the joshua tree uh fronds did we ever find out what they're called spines, spines. spines. i'm not sure but yeah, yeah. and Sharp, pokey things. he's been obsessed with them since we've been here and it, he finally poked his thumb with it you know he it's like he knows that they're that they're sharp and he managed to spend two and a half days or whatever it was without hurting himself. And then he poked himself and <laughs> it was pretty nonchalant about it. Too. Like, Oh yeah. Yeah. Those things are sharp. <laughs> yeah. I think, uh, like he is an active kid. He's used to falling. He's used to getting hurt. And, and you know, like two years ago, as soon as he fell, he used to say, I'm okay. Before he got up <laughs> like, okay, but you're fine. Um, like I'll just segue back in to sort of raising a kid in a school bus like we've been amazed at what he has come up with as far as playing in the bus mm. so recently he turned our the bus into like a runway where he ran down the middle of the bus and then would jump on a pillow and go into the master bedroom and like never in a million years did we ever think that he would play with the bus that way we just thought well we'll see you know and we don't have a lot of toys for him and he just is very creative with what he can play with now um, and, he, and he spent a solid two days running up and down the bus jumping on to the bed like that was his activity yeah like so this is like around 200 square feet livable space and he is running around yeah. like i never thought that would be something that would happen so that felt really cool to see and maybe he'll never do it again and that'll be yeah. it but uh but he's 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 a really good kid about um playing with things that are that are not toys mm. um i mean he uh, on the drive out here like he he has some toys with him he has some dinosaur stuff and some wooden magnets that have been a genius toy for him to play with over the years but he's having these long long extended battles with carrots <laughs> <laughs> and he's just we're we're up front and he's sitting in back and we're just like man there's some 
battles going on and it's just his carrots he's holding two carrots you know and we we got lucky that way and that we don't have a real big drive to we, we haven't had that pressure to load our house with shitty plastic toys yeah. and he's been able to i mean we we could have yeah. uh we we didn't i mean some of that was not just a lack of pressure from him it was a conscious decision on our part to not do that and he's fine with it i mean he wants you know he goes over to a friend's house and you know he wants that robot transformer but uh, then he comes back and he's got a cardboard tube that is now his arm and that's how he spends the rest of the day is he's now a robot because he has a you know a cardboard tube on his arm you know yeah. and he's but there there is a price like a re like a burn upon re-entry i would say like <laughs> when he's around other kids and more yeah, classic yeah. Lots of toys, lots of crappy plastic themed movie themed toys. Like there is um, a mini withdrawal he experiences, yeah. and we have to like stay strong. Yeah. And, and you should just edit all this out while we just talk and talk and talk about how great our kid is. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean I think this is great because also you're not just talking about Jasper or being a kid. Like you're also talking about being an adult, and it, all the other stuff we're talking about. Like kids can. It's not just a kid thing that they can have joy playing with uh, the like box that the toy came in. That's a metaphor for the rest of civilization that we yeah. built, right? Like, we can be happy spending however much money we spend in our lives, right? Like for food and like parts for the bus and you know stuff like that. And it's like, oh, our lives are great. We don't need all these toys that live fulfilling lives right so it's yeah. like yeah the same thing that we all did as kids and it's, it, it's like we're relearning how to do it as adults <laughs> and it, there, there's that sort of same impulse of of the child in in the adult we have impulses of our own that we are uh abandoning and, and leaving and shifting uh to you know away from the consumerist uh lifestyle and he's having a lot of those same in impulses you know he wants that that plastic toy and th and then he gets over it yeah. you know when when we don't get it for him and he has his own thing and i don't know what that's going to be like you know talk to us again in five years yeah, you know sure. and then as he gets into being a teenager you know well he gets over it now maybe at some point he's not going to get over it so easy it's it's all such a such a mystery megan toby this has been an amazing conversation thank you so much for being willing to get mic'd up and talk about your lives this has been really great uh, i feel like the the amazing part about having a podcast is you get to like mic up your friends and ask them all the questions that it's maybe somewhat awkward to <laughs> ask and it's like oh it's for the podcast don't worry about it <laughs> coming and i'm looking forward to next time we hang out probably maybe the next time we hang out is when i walk up to your house that would be oh, amazing that'd be amazing <laughs>